Um, I've been praying a lot about that idea of how, we, how I settle for God. How I settle for the things that feel good, the things that maybe even make me believe that I am pursuing God or believe that I am open to God, um, but in reality, it's all very much controlled by me. Um, I can prepare a message. I can play guitar and sing worship songs. I can lead youth group. I can pray with my kids. I can, I can do all of these things which can very easily make me go, all right, I'm pursuing. But what I keep coming to this realization of is that I tend to stop there and I settle for those things. And I go, well, you know what? I, I made it through the day. You know, nothing too bad happened. Or something bad did happen, but you know what? I was, I was able to maintain my composure and I was able to be strategic and figure out a problem and I, and I settled. And I go, all right, well, that's the most that I can hope for from God. And so that impacts the things that I ask of God. That impacts the things that I expect from God. It, it impacts how I, how I minister to other people, what I speak into their lives. And what I want to look at today, hopefully, will mess us up. Hopefully, it will cause us to leave here and go, ah, okay, so that whole Christian thing isn't quite as neat and tidy as I was enjoying it to be or as I was hoping it to be. Because as soon as we start making God really easy and really simple, as soon as we start to make God us plus, man, we are settling for not much of a God. And God wants to move in power. God wants to do miraculous things in our lives and through our lives. And so easily we settle for our best. We settle for what we can do. We settle for what we've been doing. We settle for our best efforts. And they're our best efforts. I'm not, I mean, we, we can be proud of our efforts to be good people or to be spiritual or, or whatever it may be. But what are we settling for? When Christians claim to serve a God and worship a God who is the almighty God, who's able to do the miraculous, who wants to fill us, who wants to have relationship with us and wants to interact with us. And so we come to questions like this. Why doesn't God answer our prayers the way that we ask them? And why doesn't he give us what we ask for? Am I the only one who has ever wrestled with that question? Hey, all right, so I have been a Christian since I was like four years old. I um, was raised in an incredible, God-loving family. We worshiped together, we would pray together. I worked at a church. I'm raising my kids to love Jesus. I, why is that not the magic combination to get me what I want? Why is that not going to get Matthew 7? Starting in verse 7, says this. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. This is not my experience. It, right? Keep asking and you will receive what you ask for. <laughs> this is not what we experience on a regular basis. Let's just say it, right? 
at least not according to our agenda and our plan for life and what, what, we, what we desire and what, what we think is going to make us happy and make us content. All of these things, we ask for these things. God, why do you not give us these things? Why do you not answer our prayers the way that we, the way that we pray them? Well, we've got to go back a little bit. Now, we've been in this series, Who is Your King?, and we've been going through this teaching that Jesus did. Pretty reputable source, right? So Jesus has been talking, and everything that Jesus has said so far is ridiculous. Everything Jesus says is just backward. It's not the way our society works. It's not the way that our, our like, desires and, and our impulses work. And so Jesus has been going, look, you, you think you've got it. You think you've got it straight, but you got to rethink this. We've, we've got to reframe your thinking and where your heart is at because you're not going to have the fullness of God as long as you continue just pursuing these things in this mindset. And so Jesus has said all kinds of things where we're like, but I don't want to do it that way. Last week, right? Last week we looked at where Jesus said, hey, take care of the log in your own eye before you start worrying about the speck of dust in somebody else's eye. Before you start going around and start trying to handle everybody else's deal like you've got it all together, you need to take care of the stuff in your life. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Anybody asking for that? Anybody as part of your regular prayer life, you're like, God, help me in my blind spots. Reveal to me the stuff that I don't even see. Reveal to me the ugly stuff that I like to look over and I like to like just kind of excuse and justify and, and, and make okay because it's everybody else who has a problem. Are we asking for that? Keep on asking. And you always say, well, God, I mean, don't hurt my feelings. Are we asking for that kind of stuff? Where we're inviting God to do deep work in our soul where we're inviting God to reveal the ugly. We're, re we're inviting God to search our heart and know our thoughts and reveal anything that's not pleasing to him. Is that what we're asking for? Well, no, God, I just wanted a raise. <laughs> okay, good ask, understandable ask. God's going, hey, wait, 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 hold on. There's, I have more for you. Keep on asking and you'll receive. What are you asking for? A little bit earlier in this message that Jesus is giving, he says, seek first the kingdom of who? Okay, interaction here. Seek first the kingdom of who? God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Hold on, there's an order to this stuff? There's, there's priorities? There, there's things that are actually more important to ask for than others? According to Jesus... He's saying, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Before you seek the kingdom of us, seek the kingdom of God and who he is and what he wants to do in our lives. And then the stuff that needs to be added will be added. But if we're just seeking the kingdom of us, well, all we're going to get is the kingdom of us. And I think every one of us in the room can point to somewhere in our life where we have tried to make things work out for us and it didn't satisfy like you thought it would. It didn't make you any more content. It didn't bring you any more joy. It didn't bring you any more hope. But congratulations, you've got it. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God. And it all begins with where our heart is at and what our heart is surrendered to. So it should lead us to go, all right, how do I take care of the log in my own eye? How am I supposed to seek first the kingdom of God and not be drawn in to all these other things that I want to seek, that I want to search out that I do, I think they're going to make me happy. I do think that they're going to make me content. How am I supposed to avoid getting sucked into that? Well, let's go back a little further to where Jesus began in chapter five, where he said, God blesses those 
who are poor and realize their need for him. Some translations, which I really like, it says, God blesses those who are poor in spirit and realize their need for him. It speaks to this issue in our heart where we come to this realization of, I'm empty. I can't do this on my own. I can't fulfill my own destiny. I cannot make myself content. I can never work hard enough or deserve enough or make things happen in my favor to bring me to the place where I'm going to be any more fulfilled. It speaks of this acknowledgement of our personal spiritual bankruptcy. When we go, God, what do you want to do? where we stop seeking the kingdom of us. We stop looking at all the things that the world lays out before us and says, this will make you happy. This will make you successful. This will make you want to live. And instead, we bow before God and go, I got nothing. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. This is a foundational question that we have to wrestle with. And if we're not wrestling with it, we're just going to pursue the kingdom of us because it's what's going to feel good. It's what's going to satisfy immediately. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. And I will confess to you, there are all kinds of things in my life where I don't realize my need for God because I'm fine. It's okay. My life's not a disaster. This part of my life is going the way that I want it to. This part of my life, well, it's not the way I want it to, but you know, it's the best I can do. And I settle. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. Listen to this next part. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs when we recognize our desperation for God, when we recognize we, we can't ever be enough, even if we feel like, hey, my life's pretty good, I'm a pretty good person, I'm pretty satisfied, I'm pretty content, what are you settling for? You might think it's the best. It's, you might think this is all you can expect, this is all you can hope for, but here Jesus goes, hey, when you're willing to acknowledge, I might be wrong. Maybe all this money, maybe all this success Maybe that girl, maybe that guy isn't the best that's available to me. When we come to that place, the kingdom of heaven is ours. God is ready to pour out the kingdom of heaven on our lives right now. Do you believe that? God is right. He's not, it's not once you die. It's not if you're a good enough person, eventually you get to go to heaven and everything's happy and you know, you get your, you get your robe and your harp and your, all these. It's, he's saying the kingdom of heaven, those who are poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God is ready to pour out his kingdom on our lives. Are you ready for that? Are we asking for that? See, Jesus said, ask and it'll be given to you. What are you asking for? Is that all you expect from God? Is that all you believe God is able to do? Is that all you believe God wants to do in your life? Or are we willing to surrender and go, I don't, honestly don't have any idea what the ultimate is for my life. God, I'm inviting you to bring your kingdom into my life, to usher in the kingdom of heaven over my life. And it's not easy because we want to do what we want to do, don't we? We want to do what feels good. We want to do what's right in front of us. We want to get as much of whatever is 1995 as we can because it seems like a good deal. But if we're going to do that, we've got to come to an, an, an acknowledgement that we are poor in spirit, that we don't have the full picture. And we've got to allow God 
to lower the volume of the world in our life. Because the kingdom of us, the voice in the kingdom of us is very loud, isn't it? It's screaming at us, this will make you happy. It's screaming at us that, hey, this is what you need. And it's super loud. And we've got to allow God to come in and go, you know what? I know you believe all these things that are being screamed at you. I know you think that those things are the best. I know you think that this is going to bring you to where you want to be. Will you surrender and acknowledge that I have more? It's a promise of God. And that voice of our own desires and our own agendas is loud. And it is so easy for us to listen to it. But that voice, the voice from the kingdom of us, is coming from brokenness. It's coming from brokenness within us. It's coming from brokenness in our society. Who are all scrambling, believing that we can attain the very height of what is possible. And God says, I've got the kingdom of heaven I am ready to unleash on your life. Anybody need the kingdom of heaven unleashed on their life? I so do. And God wants to do that in us. So let's go back to this question that we asked at the beginning. Why doesn't God answer our prayers the way we ask and give us what we ask for? Okay, remember, he said, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on ask, seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you for everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds and everyone who knocks, on, knocks the door will be open. So either God's just messing with us Either Jesus is like saying that, saying like, hey, keep asking, what you, asking for what you want and you'll get it. <laughs> or he's mean. God's just cruel. And he's like, hey, yeah, I'm gonna make them think that I'll give them what they asked for, but I'm not really going to. Or are you willing to consider that this is an invitation into a relationship where we can know God? that there is a purpose in him saying, ask me, come to me, ask me, lay your heart out before me. And yeah, maybe initially it's going to be full of stuff that I'm going to be like, nah, you're not getting that because it's not what you need. No, you're not getting that. I know, I know you think you want it, but you don't actually want it. Are we willing to believe in a God who loves us so much that he says, hey, persistently come to me. Persistently lay out your heart before me and recognize that when I don't give in to the kingdom of us, when I don't give in to your desires for what you think you want, that instead, I'm going to give you what you need. And my response to you is going to be out of love. It's going to be out of wholeness for you. And you may feel desperate. No, no, God, I know what I need. I know what I want. What do we trust about God? When my kids were younger, I remember one time I was at Victoria Gardens with Carter and, and he was like this tall. And he kept, you know, at, at first when they're little kids, you carry them around and then you put them on one of those human leashes and then eventually you take them off the human leash and you tell them, what? Stay with me, stay close. Well, Carter had gotten to a point that every kid does where he believed he wanted freedom. And so he kept like walking ahead and I was very like, Carter, come here, okay? And he'd come back and then he'd walk further ahead and then one day, I was like, you know what? Fine, get lost, I don't even care. No, I didn't. I, he, he started to walk ahead, and I kept him in sight. If needed, I could have intervened at any moment, but I let him get a little bit out there. 
And I saw him stop at some point and he looks around. Then I saw the concern wash over his face. Then I saw the panic. And he turns and he's looking around and suddenly he locks eyes with me. And I'm standing there like any good father with shame in my eyes. <laughs> and he came running back to me and he grabs onto me. I'm like, all right, come on. See, what he thought he wanted was freedom. What he thought would be better was to be away from me. And in that moment of realization of going out here on my own, I am not enough. I am not sufficient. I, I cannot care for all the things that I'm supposed to care about. It was only, it was then when he came running back to me that he realized, oh, what I really want, what I need at my core is here. God invites us into that same situation where we, we, we honestly believe, and this is, this is not evil or, or it, we honestly believe that we can do it. On our own, we can make ourselves happy, we can make enough money, we can be good people, we can be good, decent members of society, we can do all these things. And we, see, see, look, look how free I am. But it is only when we recognize that we can't do it for ourselves. That when we come back to God, we go, oh, here is what I've wanted all along. Here is what I've needed all along. I really thought it was out there and I tried to get it and I did my best. Jesus says, seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened. When Carter came back to me, of course I held him. Of course he was always in my sight and my desire was for him to know the safety that was with me, the security that was with me. God desires the same at, a, at an infinitely more kind of level. God knows what we need and he says, ask. He says, ask and keep asking until you get and you understand my heart. See, God wants a relationship with us. He wants a real relationship. He doesn't want to just be God with a club, do the right things. <clears throat> God wants relationship with us. And he's saying, I so badly want relationship with you. I want you to keep asking. And as you ask, and as you see my responses, which sometimes is going to be no, which sometimes is going to be, I have more for you which sometimes is going to be, I have something different for you. That as we ask and as we get God's response of love for us, all of a sudden we begin to understand, oh, this is where I should be. And it changes the ask. It changes what we seek. It changes what we go to God. It changes what we're willing to lay down and go, you know what, that looks really appealing and I think that that would really make me happy. I'm gonna seek first the kingdom of God before I seek the kingdom of us. And God says, keep asking. Because through your asking, you're gonna learn my heart. And I'm gonna show you my heart. But we have to get to that place of acknowledging our need for him and that we can't do it on our own. So, are you asking for the kingdom of God in your life or the kingdom of us? And what happens when God reveals his heart for us, doesn't give us what we want, doesn't give us specifically what we ask for, what do you think about God? Now, there are certainly selfish things that we feel totally justified in asking, and, 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 and God understands this. Like, well, I prayed for my sister to get healed, 
and she didn't get healed and she died. I prayed for that relationship with my friend and it never got redeemed, it never got restored. In those moments where God doesn't give us what we ask for, in those moments where God doesn't answer our prayer exactly as we've asked it, what do you think about God? What do you think of God? A.W. Tozer said, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Because what we think about God is going to impact what we go to God with. If we think that God is just being mean, if we think that God is just tricking us, if we think that God's just stringing us along, if we don't believe there's a God, well, then yeah, of course we're gonna seek the kingdom of us. And it's all up to us. But if we do that, we shouldn't expect anything more than what we can manufacture. God's inviting us to seek him, but what are you thinking when you think of God? But our willingness to knock and pursue and seek is going to force us to come face to face with what do we think of God? What are you thinking of God when he doesn't give you exactly what you want? He invites us into relationship. He invites us into a place where, we, where our hearts are willing to go, maybe I don't understand everything. Maybe I don't have the full picture. And God, in his love and his compassion, he's not there going, oh, come on, get over it. It's not that big a deal. He understands. He loves us and has compassion for us when we grieve. Are we in a place where no matter what, we would go, God, I'm gonna invite more of whatever it is you have for me. I really wanted you to answer this prayer like this. I really wanted you to give me this thing over here. No? Okay. It's not okay. I'm angry. I don't think it's fair. I think it's, what's the big deal? You could have just given me that and everything would have been fine. God, will you help me go past that? Will you help me go for your heart? Will you help me seek you first above all other things and trust that whatever's supposed to be added will be added? Whatever I'm, suppo whatever I'm supposed to get out of this, God, that you are gonna bring it, that you're gonna usher it in because you're going to usher in your kingdom into my life. Will we trust his word in what he says and believe that he is who he promises to be. That he's always with us. That he never leaves us or forsakes us. That God is a God who loves us so much, he's gonna take the bad stuff and the good stuff and he's gonna work it together to usher in the kingdom of heaven into our lives. Are we asking for that? Is that part, you guys, that's not part of my prayer a lot. I say I believe it. I sing songs about it. But man, it's hard to pray. This morning, whatever you may be facing in your life, maybe you're doing great. Maybe you're like, I'm not facing anything. I'm good. God, don't change anything. Those people are in the same place. It's like, okay, great, I'm glad things are good. Why are they good? And I think if we start to unpack why it's good, we recognize how temporary it is. And okay, it might be good now, it won't always be. Where do we go for life when things are difficult? Who will we trust God to be? And Jesus then continues and he gives like this practical example to parents. Because, hey, you parents, all right, let's assume you're good parents. If your children come to you and ask you for bread, are you gonna give them a rock? 
If your kids ask you for a fish, are you going to give them a snake? And then, you know, he gives you the benefit of the doubt. Of course not. And then he asks us to wrestle with this. Okay, then. When we're talking about asking God for things and God's response sometimes being no and God's response sometimes being, I have something different for you, even if you don't understand it. If you, who compared to God, are a train wreck, are able to give good gifts, are able to understand, hey, yeah, yeah, fish, snake, (laughs) ha ha, isn't funny? How much more is God able to know what you need and God able to give you what's going to bring you life? Now, this gets complicated for some people because the people that you you should have been able to trust gave you a stone, gave you a snake. And how easy it is to project that onto God. Oh, God stopped loving me and divorced me. Oh, God stopped caring about me and let, you know, made terrible things happen. Oh, God doesn't want me to be happy and so he hasn't sent anyone who will love me. Oh, God. And we start to make it that, oh, God hasn't done these things or, or is doing these things to me. And remember, What we think about God is the most important thing about us because it will determine so much about how we approach him. Jesus says, keep asking because you will understand my heart. And when you understand my heart, you will recognize it's not a stone, it's not a snake that I have love for you, I have wholeness for you, that you can never make for yourself. And when we stand in that truth, when we put our faith in that God, we can stand in confidence going, hey, yeah, yeah, no, 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 I believe this. No weapon formed against me is gonna prosper. Oh yeah, yeah, all all these things in my life that seem to be going against me and I'm I'm so tempted to try and save myself and I'm so tempted to try and make it the best that I can. No, no, I'm gonna wait on God. I'm gonna keep asking God what his heart is for me and what his will is for me because greater is he that's in me than anything the world could throw on me. I'm gonna stand in that truth. I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna see what God has for me, because he promises it's life. And it's interesting that through this entire message of Jesus, starting with, blessed are the poor in spirit who realize their need for God, all the way through how to treat one another and how to care for one another and then understand where we're at, all all of this, God's desire all along has been to draw us near. God's desire all along is to get us to understand, yeah, you you can do some things. It's not all there is. And God wants to unleash the kingdom of heaven in our lives. And it may look radically different than what we have on our list of, no, well, God better do this, this, and this, otherwise I won't think he loves me. So Lord God, right now, I pray over each one of us, God, that you would bring to light who you are in each of our souls. God, for those who have given up on you, who life has been hard or it just, you know, this whole God thing doesn't seem really like for them or whatever. God, I pray that you would reveal yourself in a way that brings us to our knees where we are willing to recognize that we can't make everything what we want it to be and the stuff that we want, God, if it's not in line with your will for our life, it's never gonna satisfy. And I pray that you would do that work in us, God, that you would bring healing to the hearts who have experienced so much brokenness and have turned that on you and have blamed you. Lord, I pray that you would reveal your compassion. I pray that you would, your, your hand of healing and restoration would just 
hold their soul. God, and that you would do what only you can do. God, for those whose lives have been great and we are so tempted to pat ourselves on the back and say, see, I can do it. Lord, I pray that you would remind us that there is the kingdom of heaven that you have for us and that there is so much more that you want to do in us and through us. But God, we've got to come to a place where we allow that to happen. And I pray that you would do that in our lives individually. God, I pray that you would do that in our church that we would never be a people who are satisfied just hearing your words and just getting educated. But God, that we would hear what you say to us and God, that your Holy Spirit, we would open our hearts to your Holy Spirit to actually make it real in our life. So God, come and move in power. Heal our land. Revive us, Lord. Bring us back from the dead. God, so that we can then love others the way that you've loved us. So we lift this up to you and we invite you to come and do that work in Jesus' name. Amen.